Let's pretend that the American government just passed a law that said it is illegal to own Bibles. How would you feel about that if that just came down the pike, came down through Sacramento? No more Bibles for you Christians. Hand them over. How would you feel? Let's hear it. They've just passed this law. What would you say? Are we going to stand for this? No! Nah! <laughs> Torches. They can't take our Bibles. Who do they think they are? I wonder, though, if a law like that were passed. And you know, it's not inconceivable in a few years the way things are going. But I wonder if a law like that were truly passed, and, and don't raise your hands when I've asked this question, how, for how many of us would that honestly change a thing about how we go about our day-to-day -day lives? For most Americans, a law like that wouldn't change a thing. Because reading the Bibles on our own, reading it to our children, it's simply not something we ordinarily do. Our lives would carry on pretty much the same. I'm not sure when we became this way as a culture. It hasn't always been this way. You know, it wasn't all that long ago when the Bible was taught in schools. How many of you remember that, when the Bible was actually part of a curriculum? Look around you. You can see quite a number of you who experienced that. And, and everyone went to church a generation ago, and Sunday schools were, were filled up. You used to have a bus ministry here, and, and this place was packed. There's a reason this building is as big as it was. It used to be filled. The average child could have paired David with Goliath and Jonah with, with the whale, and, and, and today they can't. And it's no critique to our kids because they're all like under three years old. So let's uh, grace to our parents here. <laughs> but, you know, a couple years ago, we were doing a trunk or treat event in our church in Connecticut, which is on Halloween, and we uh, had uh, all our, have you ever done trunk or treat? You've got a, a harvest festival or something you do here. Same deal. Church hosted an event. Kids came, and we gave them candy. We decorated up our cars. It was in our parking lot. And I decided I wasn't, I wasn't going to fork over the candy quite so easily, so I did what I did with the kids there, and they had to earn their candy. So I would ask them these kind of questions. Jonah and the... And, uh, and, and it, it, it was kind of the same deal, only these kids were 11, 12, and 13 years old. Jonah and the uh, evil stepmother. No, 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 it, it's an animal. Jonah and the worm. And it, it was funny, in a way, to hear some of their responses, but it was funny in a sad way. I don't quite understand biblical illiteracy. People, people are strange. If someone claims that they saw Mary on a mountaintop in France, the whole world goes nuts, and people by the thousands will fly there to, to get close to God. If someone sees Jesus in the clouds, like they did in Argentina last week. How many of you saw this photo? Let's uh, show them this photo of Jesus in the clouds. This photo was just out last week, Argentina. I think it's got to be Photoshop, but it's, they're saying it's genuine. You know, I mean, people went nuts. If, if we see Jesus in a piece of buttered toast, you know, People think that God has spoken to us. <laughs> We're so funny. But when God thought to give the world a gift and to reveal himself to us, speak to us of his ways, he didn't leave us with a, a monument. He didn't etch his face on a mountain or on a piece of toast. You know what God did for us is actually quite brilliant. What the Lord did for us to reveal himself to us. He put his thoughts in a book. And think about why that is brilliant. Why is it brilliant that God put his thoughts, his ways in a book for us? Why is that superior to etching his face on a mountain or appearing in the clouds? Because it's accessible to everyone. And everyone can understand it if they but make half the effort. Isn't that amazing that God wrote us a love letter?